As you may already know, my name's Claire Baker and I'm a former clutterholic and borderline hoarder. I successfully cleared all my clutter over 20 years ago without the need for an expensive home visit. And I've been helping people around the world do exactly the same ever since so that they too can know what it's like to live a completely clutter free life forever. As a result of my own experiences with clutter and having worked with clutterholics and hoarders for over 20 years, I know there are many feelings that we have to face if we want to clear our clutter forever. So today I want to talk about one of those feelings that we have to face, that is the fear of regret. In 2021, a clutter clearing survey discovered that the fear of regret was the number one reason why people felt resistance to letting go of things in their clutter. So what specifically is regret? Well, regret is defined as feeling bad because things could have been better if we had done something differently in the past. Regret is an emotional state that involves blaming ourselves for a bad outcome, feeling a sense of loss or sorrow for what might have been, or wishing we could undo a previous choice that we made. Regret can be a factor in important decision making, hence it's important to learn how to deal with it when we're clearing our clutter. Regret requires us to, to use what are called counterfactual thoughts. For example, you imagine how your life might be different if you had made a different decision and how your life would be different now if you'd made those different choices back then. Constantly thinking about all the possible scenarios and outcomes if you had made a different decision can trap you because the imagined outcomes are almost always better than the reality. Researcher Neil Rose of the Kellogg School of Management of Northwestern University is a lecturer in the field of regret research. He says regret can actually help with motivation and corrective action. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages to feeling regret. For example, five advantages of regret are survival. It's our brain's way, brain's way of telling us to learn from our past choices that certain decisions we made may have had negative consequences. Second, it helps us avoid repeating negative behaviours in the future. Third, it's a sign to stop and reflect to get the learning. Fourth, it helps us achieve social harmony by acknowledging our behaviour may have negative consequences for other people. And fifth, it improves our ability to recognise and take advantage of future opportunities when we learn from our regret. Five disadvantages of feeling regret are that it can help keep us stuck in the past by leading to fruitless rumination and self-blame. Second, it can lead to chronic stress. Third, it stresses our hormonal and immune system. Fourth, it reduces our resilience, our ability to bounce back quickly from difficulties and move on. And fifth, it can contribute to depression, which makes decision making much harder. So how can you move on from the regret that you feel for past decisions? Well, there are a few things that you can try. So first, accept that making mistakes is part of life. We are not perfect. Lots of things in the world are the result of mistakes. Post-it notes, for example, were invented in 1968 when the creator actually wanted to create a strong adhesive. Instead, it was light enough to easily remove and peel apart. So remember, not all mistakes have negative consequences. I'm definitely grateful for post-it notes. Second, be aware of confirmation bias. This is where we interpret information in a particular way that confirms what we already believe and ignore the information that challenges our belief. If we've regretted letting go of things in our clutter in the past, we'll use those regrets as evidence that we're going to regret letting go now so that we can justify keeping everything just in case. Third, 
Replace should have with next time. Changing your language from negative to positive will ensure you help your brain make an informed decision next time based on your past experiences. Fourth, figure out what your ideal self wants or needs. Focus on your clutter-free goal and what you'll regret if you don't achieve it. Fifth, use your not sure category. When you clear your clutter, the clutter clearing way, you never make fast decisions that you might regret because you have your not sure. Make sure you use it so you make the right decision for you. Sixth, Use your life timeline to learn from your past and see what positives can and have come after a decision that you regretted at the time. Seventh, use regret as a learning and feedback mechanism that can inform your future decisions. List the things you didn't like or regretted and what you would need to do or accept if it happened again. Eighth, Use your success gratitude journal. Capture your good decisions and positive letting go experiences as successes in your success gratitude journal to help you realize that although you may occasionally regret your some decisions to let go, you make just as many or more good decisions that you don't regret, especially if letting go helps other people. Ninth. If thoughts of regret tend to take over, find an activity you can do regularly to de-stress your mind and your body so that your brain doesn't ruminate on constant repeat. So, for example, mindfulness, yoga, walking, TRE. And finally, 10th, forgive yourself. Let go. Accept that you will make mistakes in life that you'll regret. And that's okay. Those mistakes and regrets have made you the perfectly imperfect person you are today. And we wouldn't have you any other way. If you want to learn how to face the many feelings associated with your clutter and clearing it, click on the link with this video now and start your seven step journey to your clutter free life.